I've got to start by doing the uh, setup and the layout of the joints that I want to make for him. And it's pretty much just a matter of working out what position they need to be in and then matching the orientation of the joints so that they fit in with the look of the character. This is pretty much the same sort of technique that I've used in the past. The only real difference is that the connecting pieces that I'm using are slightly angled. As it turns out, instead of using the black curtain rod like I've done in the past, the black tube that you can see here is a poly plumbing tube. It's just some stuff I had left over from other jobs. And given the length of the individual pieces, it's more than stiff enough to hold the shape in place. I had to make up a separate connecting piece for where the head attaches because the pipe connector only has a T-piece. I needed to add in another snap-on section so that I had a fourth connecting point for the head and neck. So here's a tip for you for making up the thicker armature wire. The extruded rod stuff that you can buy from most hardware shops can be knurled to a point where it's really soft and malleable simply by heating it up and then rapidly cooling it. And that's pretty much true of aluminium in general if you want to make it softer and easier to work with. A good way of gauging the temperature for when it's ready to be quenched is to put some black marker pen on it. And as you heat up the metal, when that black mark starts to disappear, you'll be at the right temperature for quenching in the water and that will soften up the metal so that it's ready for use. Another tip is for the thinner stuff. When I say thinner, this is about 3.2 millimetres. And given that you can get wire that's almost the thickness of the human hair, uh, this is still pretty heavy gauge. This strand though has been taken off a larger bundle. This, this is aluminium cable. It's predominantly used in overhead power lines and you can find different versions of it that have insulation on it that you can strip off the insulation and use it that way as well. Because it's been wound under tension though, the wire is quite stiff. It's very hard to move, which is really good in some applications, but to use it as the armature wire, it needs to go through that knurling process. And just to give you an idea, if I give it a bend there, you can see the flex as opposed to the stuff that's been heat treated, which has no flex in it at all. And I got that length of cable from my uh, local metal recyclers. And from memory, I think it was only a couple of dollars for a, about a meter's length of it. By taking that untreated wire and coiling it into uh, like a spring arrangement, I can then stick that in the heat. Uh, and when it loses its springiness under the heat, that's to say I can push that against the bench and the spring closes up and stays closed. It's then ready for quenching and that produces that soft wire that we're after. Now I'm doing this under a flame, but you could just as easily coil up a dozen or so of those and stick them in your oven and bring it up to as high as temperature as your oven will go to, and then just dump it in a sink full of water and that'll do a whole bundle of them all at once. I'm just using super glue to glue the rod ends in place. This would probably be solid enough on its own because once the flesh and skin is added to it, it would stop it from coming apart anyway. But to make it doubly secure, I'm also using some stainless steel lock pins to hold the ball joints in place. And because I'm only using that plastic stuff, I can drill directly through it using the rod itself and then just cut it off to the right length and push it down flush with a pair of pliers. So that's the basis of the skeleton armature sorted out. I think you get a bit of an idea of what it should look like there. So 
So now what I need to do is start fleshing it out in such a way that it still maintains movement in the joints. For that, I'm going to be using this exercise mat stuff and I'll be shaping it and gluing it around the rod pieces until I'm happy with the basic shape of it. There's a few areas like around his ankles where this actually may have to be thinned down a little bit to match the character. And while you can't see it at the moment, that section in there has been filled up with the resin so I can actually carve that back quite a bit if necessary to get the shape that I'm going for. When I'm doing this sort of stuff as well, um, please don't think that I'm speaking from an area of authority. Uh, it's not like I've done this sort of thing before, it's purely just sort of working out as I go along and you guys are along for the ride as well. Uh, some things will work, some things won't work, and it's really just a matter of experimentation and grabbing experience from a whole other different fields in my life and trying out ideas that I hope that'll work. So really what I'm doing with this blue foam is trying to flesh out the hollow areas between the joints while still leaving the joints exposed so they've still got that movement potential. So I think that's pretty much all I need to do as far as adding in that blue foam stuff at the moment. I think you can see that's starting to build up the contours that we're after. The biggest thing that I need to be careful of is that I'm not fleshing out the foam stuff too much because I've still got to build on layers over this when it comes to the um, scaling of the skin and that sort of stuff. I need to fill in the joint areas a little bit but I don't want them to become too chunky either. The other thing that I need to work on obviously is the head. I've got a couple of angle pieces and a larger one and I'm hoping that I'll be able to chop them up and amalgamate them into a skull that I'll then be able to flesh out and add on the ears and teeth and all that sort of stuff. Years ago, I made a uh, stainless steel sort of gargoyle king sort of sculpture. And by doing a similar thing, by chopping up the plastic pieces, I hope to be able to get a similar sort of effect as far as the basis for the skull that we need. So the plan as far as the joint sections are concerned and those sort of fleshy areas where a lot more movement is required is I'm going to sort of make those bits a little bit more like a plush toy with a solid part running through it. And basically I've just got like an old cushion, old pillow that's seen better days. And I'm just going to steal the stuffing, use that wrap around bits where I need to and then fluff it up a bit more and pack out those areas so that it fleshes it out the way I want it to but still remains soft enough that the joints can maintain the movement in it as well.
So that seems to have worked out pretty well. Um, I've just used uh, some black cotton to hold everything in place until I can start working out what I'm doing as far as the skin is concerned. So for now I'll set that aside and work out what needs to be done as far as the head. Uh, whatever I do as far as the jaws, I want to keep some articulation in that as well so that I can sort of open or close the mouth as well. And once I've got the skull attached, as far as the skin is, I want to maintain that movement. So what I'll probably end up doing is making the skin so that the arm is fully extended so that it allows for the stretch in the joints. But anyway, as I said, it's all fairly experimental. So that'll be the update for this time, guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time. Oh, I didn't know you got a little dude. Yeah, it came in the thing. Oh, it's more important to do him. He's an evil one. Oh. <laughs> I thought he was a gizmo. No.